The story starts with a regular guy who works from 9 to 5 and is excited to use a new type of vending machine that only gives out one drink a day. Since he liked vending machines, he was excited to try something he had never done before because it made him feel like he was looking for treasure. But just as he was about to pay, a truck sped up and hit the vending machine, sending it flying into the air. But our office guy gets too excited and tries to fix the vending machine, which ends up killing him. Surprisingly, he was reborn near a lake as the thing that cost his life. Since he knows there's nothing he can do, he comes to terms with his new life and changes the prices of his drinks for customers. But the vending machine uses points instead of electricity, which is a problem. Each hour costs one point, and for days he didn't have any customers or visitors who wanted to use it. When a frog person showed up, he suddenly realized he was in a different world. Just as he played back his welcome tune, he started hitting the machine with his weapon. When he tried to lose health on purpose another frog person with an axe came to the scene, a girl warrior ran in like Tarzan. When the frog people were about to attack the girl, he saved her with his force field power, which cost him a lot of points because he had to keep it going for a while. The girl starts crying for food when she wakes up and she wishes she had been a hunter when she had the chance. The vending machine saves her life because she can buy food with her money, even though it's very expensive for her. Everything in the vending machine was so good that she kept buying it all and chugging it almost as soon as she got it. When she's done eating, she says her name is Lammies. She was able to understand what the main character was going through. He reminds her of her friend Hilami, and because he was the only thing that kept her from being lonely, our main character ends up protecting her at night with his force field. When she left the next day, she felt like she would miss the vending machine so much that she took the main character with her. The MC and the girl were both happy and glad that the new friend was coming along. On the way, Lammies ends up buying potato chips from his new lineup. The main character knew that it was hurting her wallet, but he had no other way to make a living than to sell the goods. When Lammies got to the settlement, she introduced the main character to Karyos and Gorth, two of the guards. When they propose to her the idea of selling the main character, she forbids them to do so and explains how it works. They were both surprised just like Lammy's was when she met the main character for the first time and was blown away by how it worked. When the main character went back to the inn, she met Manami and her mother, who owned the inn. She stayed at the inn. When the introduction to the main character was over, Manami noticed that Lammy's didn't have any money on her, and she couldn't pay for her room because she spent all of it in the machine. It made the main character sad, but the owner told her she could work and stay while the machine stays outside. Before the day was over, Lammy's came up with the name, Boxo, for the main character, which he also liked. Our main character liked living in the settlement because Manami took care of him and he was able to find regular customers. The people who were on guard duty for the settlement kept coming back, so they were the most important customers. One day, Swari, the child of a wealthy merchant, was sad. To cheer her up, he gave her something to eat for free, which made her very happy. After a few days, Lammy's bought new gear to carry our main character, and when she entered the settlement, a talking bear greeted her which ended up shocking our main character. Lammy's saw that all of the adventurers were ready to attack a frog fiend base, and one of the hunter girls in the group was introduced to them. Lammy's also introduces herself as a hunter to her, and the main character could guess the hunters are actually adventurers. The talking bear that surprised our main character is the director of the hunters' association. He wanted Lammy's to carry Boxo into battle because they will need his help getting food and supplies while they go on the attack. Boxo had to leave, so Lammy's agreed to go. One of the seniors told her she would be on the transport team, so she wouldn't have to fight any frog fiends. Boxo was suspicious of the hunter because of how he was acting, and Lammy's could see right through his face, just like Boxo could. The hunter guy's name is Captain Kiriel, and when he was acting strangely, a woman on the team named Philmina punished him with her magical power. On the way, none of the hunters or carriers could keep from drooling when they saw Lammy's and Shui eating from the vending machine, so they joined them. The new lineup of cup noodles made them so happy they kept coming for it. When Boxo got enough points, he bought the omnidirectional vision, which helped him see better when Lammy's carried him. Even though Boxo's new skill was useful, it made him feel like he was going to throw up all the time. While everyone was eating dinner and setting up camp for the night, the director told Lammy's that they would soon have to fight the frog fiends. He was worried about Lammy's and Boxo and that they wouldn't be safe, which makes her nervous about bringing Boxo with her, but he was eager to travel with them. 
Since Lamis was the first friend he made in the New World, Boxo promised himself that he would keep helping her no matter how many points it cost him. When they finally got to the enemy base, everyone joined the fight right away, even Lamis, who fought while carrying Boxo on her back. Captain Kirio was impressed by Lamis's strength as she continued to kill frog fiends while Filmina used her magic to blast through the enemies. But somehow Boxo gets hit from behind as the enemies surrounded them from all the way which distracted Lamis as she felt bad for him. When Lamis stopped all of Boxo's attacks, it made him think about the past and how his life had ended. Boxo wanted to protect Lamis and the others from the enemies because he was thinking about the past. Boxo turned on his force field right away, which makes the light around them hit all of the frog enemies around them. The hunter girl on their team didn't understand what was happening and thought that it was Lamis's powers but Lamis herself ends up clearing up the fact that it was indeed Boxo and not her. Lamis instructs Boxo that he should let her know if enemies get behind his back which ends up helping her, as she kept plowing through them. Boxo uses his playback voice records to confirm which enemies are coming, which makes her attacks with overpowered fists and sharp movements smoother than they were before. She remembers that her martial arts teacher used to train her with a boulder on her back and Captain Kirill's praise ends up being a huge distraction. But they didn't have to worry because Boxo used up his force field again to save everyone. When Kirill sees the power, he starts asking questions, which makes Boxo suspicious of him. However, it didn't help to be sneaky because Lamis kept telling everyone the truth. The captain's terrible face made him even more suspicious, since there was a chance he might try to steal him. When the battle between the hunters and the frog fiends is finally over, Everyone starts cleaning up the battlefield, and Kirill tells them to cut the monster's tongues. When it came time to join the front lines, Lamis decided to join the hunters to help them, and Boxo once again agreed with her. They all went to help the director clear out the settlement, where they were fighting for their lives. When the fight was over, he thought that the fiend's reactions might show the arrival of a king frog fiend, who might be leading the others. The director left with his best soldiers to kill the king leaving Lamis and one or two other regular hunters in charge of food behind. When everyone was busy getting food, Lamis went to help an injured person, so she had to leave Boxo alone. This made a person who looked evil angry when he saw Boxo. The strange and mysterious man looks around to see if anyone is there, then uses the wire he brought with him to steal money from Boxo. But Boxo makes things hard for him when he starts playing his pre-recorded greetings to get people's attention. The thief keeps hitting Boxo, and he ends up letting out a can of boiling hot corn soup, which makes him angry. The thief loses his cool and aims his knife at Boxo to hurt him. As Boxo could have guessed, Lamis catches the thief red-handed. Lamis starts to question the man named Google, and the hunters and Boxo confirm what Lamis thinks. Lamis decides to tie the man up, and the hunters start to watch over him. Suddenly, though, the king frog fiend appears and starts shooting everything around them leaving everyone to wonder where the guarding party went. Everyone thought the monster was dangerous because he was covered in a huge flame. Suddenly, the director and the rest of the team appeared and told the other players to run away to a safe place. When everyone started running for safety, Lamis didn't know what to do because she wasn't ready to face something scary with Boxo on her back. The monster fiend was immune to all of their weapons, and their pet boar couldn't run away because it was too scared of the place. Lamis lets the boar out of the danger zone and takes the cart's rope so she can drive it herself. Boxo realizes that he won't be able to save the wounded with his field force, so he comes up with another plan to keep everyone safe, but he might have to spend a lot of points on it. The big frog monster was only a few feet away, so Boxo hurried to give his body a new function and shape while he bought two liters of cola bottles to keep everyone safe. Boxo changed into a round Mentos vending machine and gave Lamis the cola bottles but his instructions were too hard for her to understand because he could only send a limited number of voice messages. He could only tell her to put the coins in, which meant she had to put the mentors in the bottles, but since she was from a different universe, it was hard for her to understand. While she was trying to figure out what he was trying to tell her, the hunter girl with the bow and arrows decided to stop the villain on the cart from yelling by putting cola and mentos in his mouth at the same time. The explosion inside his mouth caused all of the colas to spill out of his mouth, which gave Lamis the idea to use the cola bottles and mentos in a smart way. When the huge monster was about to attack their cart by jumping on it, everyone in the area jumped back on the cart and got ready with bottles of cola and mentos, which were their last chance to avoid a life-threatening danger. 
The main course starts when everyone gets their hands on the Coca-Cola bottles and starts filling them with Mentos candies to use the carbonated strength to save the cart from the monster. Not only them, but Phil Mina was also doing her best to corner the burning monster with water power and magic. When that wasn't enough, she doubled the strength with all the power she still had. When Lammies and her group realized there was no other way out, they shot cola bottles at the monster's eyes as hard as they could. Eventually, the fire got weaker as the monster got hurt and started to hide its eyes from the others. When the main hunters start fighting the monster because they can finally hit it with their weapons, Lammies runs as much as she can to get the injured away from the scene. The monster's blasts weren't as hot as they used to be, so the hunters were able to hit it quite effectively. Then the director jumped into the air to finish the monster off with his sharp claws. The hunter's group finally got rid of the monster, and everyone was very happy about what they had done. But Boxo felt bad because he thought he had given up more than 2,000 points to save everyone around him. Even though everyone kept praising President Hacken, he still thanked Lammies and Boxo for their help along the way. He also admitted that he made mistakes, since his mistakes put them in danger. All of them went home with full success chests but Boxo made the most sales in a day, even though he had to waste a lot. But the ruined and deserted state of their camp scared everyone because they had never seen or thought that their camp would be like that. The whole village was trashed by someone or something they didn't know, and every hunter was pretty shocked by what they saw. Lamis was about to cry, and Boxo was sad that he couldn't move to check on anyone because he was stuck. When Lamis was sad and couldn't say anything, Boxo tried to talk to her by mixing his inner voice with the pre-recorded messages. Even though Lamis couldn't understand him perfectly, she got the idea that he was trying to say something and went into the village to see what was going on. Lamis walked through the village and saw that it had been completely destroyed by an unknown force, but there were no dead bodies. Also, the inn where she used to live had been destroyed by some kind of earthquake. She tried digging under the broken buildings to find the owner and the daughter, but she didn't find anyone. When she finally got to the group of hunters, she saw a two-headed snake that had been killed by many arrows and spears. Lamis saw that the two guards were fine and that nothing had happened to them. They also told him that all of the villagers were safe, which made him cry with happiness. It seems that when the villagers set off the magical alarm, they were all teleported to safety through a teleportation circle. When everyone came out after Lamis and the others arrived, Boxo opened his shop again and gave away everything for the night because it was a reason to celebrate. Lamis was drunk and happy as she continued to cling to him even though she was too high to care. Boxo was already a part of everyone in the village without him even realizing it, and he felt like he might be falling for Lamis because he would have liked someone like her when he was a human in Japan. The next day, everyone in the village started fixing things, since all of the buildings and structures had been destroyed and they all needed new homes. Not only that, but the hunters' group said they would pay for all the repairs because they had made more than enough money from selling the double-headed snake and the frog monster. The bear director put Lammies in charge of cleaning up trash, and she was happy to do her job. When Captain Kiriel showed up, everyone wanted to shake his hand because he was the leader of the foolish travelers. This confused Boxo, who couldn't figure out why he was so popular. As the association was about to treat everyone, he started spending on the vending machine. Lamis was asked to join the foolish travelers by the captain himself, and she could also bring Boxo with her. But she turned down his offer right away, even after giving it some thought. Everyone was surprised to see Captain Kiriel walk away embarrassedly. But Lamis wasn't willing to give Boxo away to anyone for anything. Also, Akoi and Gagyai from the Merchant Association came to check on everything because Boxo's arrival had a terrible effect on the cash flow in the area. Gagyai wanted to trade some of the silver coins for their gold coins but he couldn't because Boxo didn't have a way to do that. But Lamis saved the day by suggesting that the money the Merchant Association was going to give be used to buy things. They decided to spend the day at Boxo because they kept buying more things from him. Lamis was worried about Boxo's safety because he was full of gold coins and could be a target for any of the thieves. It happened at night, when the thieves went out to look for Boxo, but he was smart enough to change color and get away from them. After a while, a woman named Charlie walked up to him, and told him that the village was well known because the hunters group had been able to beat many strong monsters. Since a lot of people were moving into the village, there must have been more problems with hygiene because of sexual activities. She asked him for a way to stop her from getting sick, and he gave her the answer. Before they parted ways, she said that if Boxo were a person, she would have loved to show her gratitude with her body. When the village was almost done being fixed up, 
more and more people moved in every day, and a new event, a shared bath, started happening every three days for everyone. Boxo was always left outside to earn money while Lammies wanted to see what the other girls looked like when they were in the bath. Filmina's conversation with Lammies made Boxo feel worse and worse, since he could hear and see everything. Lammies said that she would love it if he could come to her house as a human while she was reaching for the cart. Boxo replied almost right away, which Lammies noticed, but it was pretty harmless in the end since they don't have a chance anyways. That concludes part one of this recap. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. What will happen next? If you would like to see a part two of this manual, let us know in the comments section below. Till next time.